right, everyone. Hello and welcome in to the second straight day of me attempting to film a video during a thunderstorm. So, yeah, if you hear any of those noises in the background, that is currently what is happening in our area this evening. We just can't seem to escape them this week during this very humid stretch of weather. Yesterday, to open the video, I showed you the clip of Von Miller leading the crowd at the joint practice session between the Minnesota Vikings and the Denver Broncos in the Skull Chant. And then during the intro, I told you how having seen that video made me really hyped and excited for the upcoming regular season, really put me in a football consuming mood. Uh, today's video and news is a little bit more deflating and sort of bringing us back down to earth because we have learned some Something that could have some devastating ramifications on the Minnesota Vikings season if this doesn't go as we hope and it goes south. So, what is the bad news of the day? Well, you've already clicked on the video, so you kind of know what it is, but let's get into the thick of things here. Uh, Tom Pelissaro tweeted this afternoon, Minnesota Vikings first round pick Christian Derrissaw underwent a minor core muscle procedure this morning, August 12th, with specialist Dr. William Myers in Philadelphia. Uh, the source said that the visit was good news overall, and the hope is Derisaw, Minnesota's projected starting left tackle, is ready for week one. So that is only two sentences, but that is two very devastating sentences, and we will break those down here in a second with what I think we should all prepare ourselves for some bad news. So, quick recap before we talk about this breaking news today with Christian Derisaw. Uh, the, the draft class so far for the Minnesota Vikings, the 2021 draft class, is not having a good go of things here early on in the uh, early portions of training camp. We haven't even hit the preseason yet, and this is how the first four selections so far have fared uh, as they get their feet wet in the NFL. So Christian Derisaw, Hasn't really practiced at all. Wasn't really a participant in OTA's mandatory minicamp. Uh, he's put on the pads and done some individual work. And then today we learned that he has a second surgery and the timetable for him to return is unknown. I know in the tweet it said week one was hopeful, but we're going to argue that here in a minute. Uh, Kellen Mond, positive test for COVID-19, missed 10 days of practice. He is currently quarterback three in the depth chart. Wyatt Davis is third string. He has not been able to break into the second team at all. Chaz Surratt, the linebacker from North Carolina, also listed as a third string linebacker. Hasn't been able to overcome guys like Nick Vigil on the depth chart who projects to be the starter now. So um, not great so far for the Minnesota Vikings' first four selections from the 2021 NFL Draft. But the story of the day is Christian Derrissaw. And just to inject my opinion here real quick, this is frustrating because... You know, we kind of thought that this was maybe going to be a, a thing that figured itself out throughout the throughout the preseason, and now it looks like we could be missing Christian Derisaw for not only the opener of week one, but potentially longer, and we're going to get into that. But I feel for Mike Zimmer today, who has said over the course of training camp so far, if you've listened to any of his uh, sessions where he was made himself available to the media to answer questions, you know, a few days ago, he talks about Christian Derrissaw, you know, having a setback. It's two steps forward, one step back with him. Uh, that's why he's not able to participate in practice. And then today, actually, just recently, if you if you uh, got to hear what he had to say, and if you haven't, go check it out. Um, he's really sounded like he felt like he was getting jerked around uh, with this injury because uh, they thought that this was something that was taken care of with the surgery that he had in the off season, you know, way back in January. And uh, it just it just keeps coming up. It just keeps becoming a thing. And this honestly feels like Daniil Hunter 2.0, right? Because last year, Daniil Hunter, um, you know, goes uh, goes and flies to get uh, second opinions uh, with medical officials and then eventually has, uh, uh, you know, neck surgery that ends his season. And then the whole time in camp, it's like, oh, it's no big deal. It's just a tweak, which, you know, the, the beat writers are still kind of picking at him for that. And Mike Zimmer kind of brings it up himself uh, in jest. But really, this doesn't feel good. So, um, thoughts and opinions about what is going on with Christian Derrissaw and what this means for the Vikings heading into 2021. It's not great. Uh, we don't really have any sort of confirmation on his timetable to return. The second part of Tom Pelissaro's uh, tweet that I read to you, uh, the visit was good news overall and the hope is Derrissaw is, is uh, ready for week one. That sounds like PR talk to me, whether that's coming from his agent, maybe the, the source is his agent, maybe the source is a doctor, uh, who knows. But uh, to me, that sounds like a PR statement, like they're trying to calm the nerves of anybody that's going to read that. It reminds me a lot of the Dallas Cowboys tweet 
uh, that they put out the other day about Dak Prescott needing a second MRI. If you haven't seen that yet, go go read that because the reactions to it are phenomenal. Um, but that sounds like PR talk to me because here's where I disagree. Let's say that he is physically ready to participate in uh, the week one uh, contest against the Cincinnati Bengals. If he's physically healthy to go, they give him the green light. There is a zero chance that he is going to start much less play in the week one game against the Cincinnati Bengals. I think it would have to be like a 56 to nothing blowout just for him to get some reps at the end of the fourth quarter. Even then, I doubt it happens. Um, and the reasoning behind that is because he's missed so much practice. Mike Zimmer, as we have established with Kellen Mond in recent videos, is, is a rookie, and he's already behind the eight ball coming into training camp. Remember, Justin Jefferson, on the first unofficial depth chart last year, was listed as a backup. He was, uh, he was losing out the starting position to B.C. Johnson early on in training camp. Uh, so this does not bode well. I mean, I just told you about what the status is of the first four draft picks. Amir Smith-Marset is in the doghouse uh, with Mike Zimmer just because he's not doing well on special teams, and that's the role that he wants him to have. Sounds like he has full confidence in him as a uh, an offensive player, but he really wants him to get uh, acclimated to special teams because that's where he's going to be a significant contributor. So with rookies, Mike Zimmer is already not a fan of you, and if you miss a bunch of practice for really whatever reason... He's not going to give you an opportunity uh, to really uh, get yourself into the starting role. Now, this is a problem for a lot of reasons. Uh, it's going to take Christian Derisaw a lot of time to catch up on the time that he has missed and is going to miss because this is going to put him out for a while, I have to imagine. Uh, it, it, they, they totally are going to protect him. They don't want to uh, re-aggravate this and cause it to be an, an even bigger problem than it already is. Uh, other reasons why this is a problem... This pretty much cements Rashad Hill as the starting left tackle, at least for week one, and I think potentially beyond uh, for the Minnesota Vikings. And that's bad news because remember, you know, people are going to say like, oh, you know what? It's no big deal. The Vikings put up with this last year and the year before that. They've had a bad offensive line for, you know, how long now? Uh, this is something that they can overcome. I mean, look how good the offense was last year. Listen, I hear what you're saying. But the problem is that the offensive line was bad on the inside. The, the exterior, the tackles, Brian O'Neill and Riley Reef were really good last year. Uh, Brian O'Neill is a rising star in this league, and Riley Reef really played, uh, I, I think, above expectations last year and was a really solid left tackle for this offense and protecting Kirk Cousins. Um, the, the entire left side of the offense is now subject to punishment from opposing teams, and I think that's where the, the, the target of the blitz is and the, the defensive strikes is going to come from because Rashad Hill, good swing tackle, good backup. I, I'm glad he's here. But in terms of, you know, starting an entire season as the left tackle, I'm, I'm not that confident. And then to, to, put, to, the, to put the cherry on top of the anxiety-ridden Sunday is uh, that we got this incident today where uh, uh, Rashad Hill had to exit practice and uh, Blake Brandell had to come in and take over. So we're basically down to our, our, our third-string left tackle, um, and, and we haven't even played the first preseason game yet. Now, I'm sure the Rashad Hill situation is going to be okay. He'll, he'll play. He'll start uh, the preseason game. I'm sure it's not a significant injury, but just, you know, we're on pins and needles here with this offensive line already, which hasn't looked good, by the way in pass protection. We talked about that in yesterday's video. So this is going to be a problem. Uh, Hill, Rashad Hill is a significant downgrade over Riley Reef. I don't think that that's debatable. I think we need to mentally prepare ourselves, mentally prepare ourselves that uh, Rashad Hill is going to be a, the starting left tackle for this team for uh, the foreseeable future, at least for right now. Uh, so we, we, we got to hope that Christian Derrissaw can recover from what uh, whatever procedure he had the, uh, today. Uh, faster than he's has been because this is a very slow pace um and, and now that now the question is do we see him during the 2021 season at all does this become full-fledged deniel hunter 2.0 uh where we're revisiting this scenario uh, instead of a defensive end uh that is very critical to the success of the defense are we now talking about a left tackle who was supposed to come in fill in for riley reef and sort of play up to those expectations, and now we're we're looking at backup, uh, you know, already taking over for what was projected to be a weak offensive line inside, and now we have significant concerns about the blind side of Kirk Cousins. So let me know what you think of this uh, breaking news story today re uh, regarding Christian Derisaw and uh, the offensive line going forward. Thank you very much for watching. I will see you in the next one.